what is going on guys today we are looking at all of the SBCs readily available to you right now we have started the fantasy foot we've got three SBCs of them to go through but also we've still got a lot of decent cards that you can still do so starting off with not a rant but almost I called it I I, re I didn't think I would Tevez I cannot believe they gave him a card genuinely I thought that, that it was just a theory that they gave us an SBC. Could he get a fantasy foot? And most definitely he did. I, honestly, I don't understand. We still don't have a Di Natale. I, I, I just... Why? Genuinely why? They've given us an SBC for him to then upgrade him. The only thing different, I suppose, other than the fact he more than likely will get at least one upgrade being for Man City. So he will be a 92 at a minimum. So technically... He's not just a single upgrade, which is nice, but they've got to score 10 in their next three. It's definitely not unheard of from City, especially seeing as though they've got Man U this week. And in general, I think that card is it's very nice. 4.3 mil is crazy. This Tevez, though, I'm, I just still can't get along with for the price of him for a million. I think for me... If you had the Martinez, if you've done an Mbappe, if you've done a Eusebio, his value just doesn't scream worth it in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, I do like Tevez in game. I think the 90 and the 91 both are absolutely brilliant going forward as a striker. So if you have not done a striker card yet, then maybe he could be worth looking at. But for me, I would personally stay away from this one personally. That, that just is what it is. We then have some future stars. We have got a decent amount going in there still, so we more than likely won't see many player SBCs this week. Obviously, we've got the kind of the normal few. We've got a normal Werner. Then we've got two heroes, which to be honest, cheap wise, we'll speak to them in a minute. But we do have the second week of future stars available. So we go from, we've obviously got uh, um, Matthias. We've obviously got Richardson. We've got Hemp, Savio, ba is it, uh, Baddy, Bad Bade. Bad, eh? We'll go with it. And then also we've got Undogi. Beautiful left back. Very, very good price. Let alone with some of these, we also got the ability to actually evolve them. I believe it did cost, I want to say. Did it cost? Or has it gone already? Has it gone already? FC, attacker midfielder, forest and strike. I think it might have gone already. That's crazy. That went really quick. We did have, uh, I wonder if it's it's going to be here somewhere. If we go into, in fact, I know Ndogi can go into it. So, can I spell that right? Yeah. So, if you did go for this FC Glow Up, has that actually gone already? Has it gone? If your team's looking like this, then I have the place for you. Head over to U7Buy for all your coin needs. They're cheap, fast, and reliable. But make sure to use JT11 at the checkout for 6% off all of your coin orders. I'm just looking to see if it's got any sort of... Uh... It must have gone if it's not here. FC Glow Up, FC Glow Up, FC Glow Up. So it has gone. Wow. That is a lot quicker than, it, than expected. Yeah, it did go. Expire. Oh. Oh, no, unlocked. Oh, okay, yeah. So if you've done it, if you've basically put a card in, you'd be able to still do it, but it fully expires in six days. That makes more sense. But in terms of that, that was really good. Yes, you had to put a cost in, but some of the SBC cards, pretty much most of them can. Obviously, we've got Musa, who is the level 10 objective card. You obviously have Ndogi, Richardson, Merlin's an SB, an SB. An objective card as well. Obviously, another objective card. Bad A's in it. You've got the uh, right mid in it. And then a few of the lower future stars from 1 and 2. But I think in terms of the upgrade, it adds a value. So in Dogi, you could technically, for 140, 150,000 coins, if you used to buy everything from scratch, buy the evolution and buy the card from scratch, you could get yourself a 90 left back. I think that's a brilliant thing that they can add into the game just to give you... A little bit more from a card. Now, in terms of pricing, I must admit most future stars were relatively cheap. I don't think there was really a bad option. Hemp, I feel like, is a decent card and, and was sold more as a decent card. Hence why she's 500,000. I don't know if she was a must complete. I'd probably go in good value. But in terms of the future stars, every single one of them is good value. Now, Undogi, I would say, is a must complete. 
purely on the left back stance that he is very cheap with if you well if you want to do the evolution as well now you can't as such but if you were to do it that for me is a cracking value for a left back especially prem he obviously gets the free chem as well i think that is absolutely brilliant and i believe i've got all of them and then even him phenomenal value so i would say all of these are worth it purely on either an evolution standpoint or just a little bit of fodder later on down the line pretty much all of them were anywhere between 30 to 50 thousand I don't see that being a problem one bit. When it comes to Hemp, yes, like I say, she has been sold off as a better card. And I must admit, from the comments I've seen, she definitely is more favoured compared to a lot of these SBCs. And when it comes to the right mids and centre backs, they're decent, but they're then by no means taking over anybody's job. They are as standard as you like. They add a little bit of flair, but that's about it. Especially if you are doing some of the home hitters with the Georgie Best, the Zikos, the Omri's, they're not going to hold a torch to them being 30, 40,000 coins. I just think they're phenomenal value for your fodder at the minimum. We then have some of the player of the month still. We've obviously got Undav, Brobby, Vlahovic, Jota, and Kieran. Or Kieran, however you want to pronounce it. We are due to get Terrier, I believe, who is Lee Gunn's player of the month. I don't, I don't think that's been announced. I'm pretty sure I saw it was Terrier that won it. It isn't going to be Mbappe, or I believe the other runner was Ben Yedder. So it looks like Terrier is up next, rather than a third player of the month, Mbappe. But if we are looking at the player of the months that we've got currently, we have Undav coming in at 52,000. We have got Brobby at 44. We've got uh, Rodriguez, I suppose I could call him that, at 87. Vlahovic at 61. And Jota at 275. Decent values across the board. I would I would probably definitely go with all of these as top uh, kind of good values. None of them are must completes really. They, I would go for more must completes if we had icon swaps. If we had something that I could say this is the first time we've got an 87 striker Air Divisi, that's going to be great for your Dutch or Air Divisi team. You could put that in for your icon swaps. That is where that almost collection mentality came from because we had multiple objectives where we had to go online everybody had an 11 versus 11 air divisi no bench needed you had to go with them so it was not necessarily important but it was definitely a home hitter to be able to have that full special air divisi team now it's just not needed anymore i feel like that kind of part of fifa is kind of closed and we're into the whole mega team and that's it it's kind of gone back which is hilarious if, if ever you've played fifa 09 showing my age you didn't actually ever have a club you didn't even ever have multiple squads you had a start in 11 and a bench that is it the way that you'd get more players you would have to sell whoever's in your team and on the bench to bring in the new players if you wanted to swap out team for team there was no way of creating multiple teams so it's almost like We've technically gone back to that, but then you've just got like this side panel of, of your club that is just fodder driven into all of these SBCs. It is a bit nuts. Jota, on the other hand, I mean, with Jota, it's, it's kind of a bit complicated because he's 275, but the problem I've got, we've got an 88 here. The only thing that sways me is he's got the Rapid Plus. That is brilliant in my eyes of a play style. I'm a big fan of that, so... I, I normally, if it was me for, for like being really picky with him, I would go nothing else to do. I think he's decent value for a rapid plus. I don't like that it's just a one upgrade from his previous version, with a free version as well. But the rapid plus definitely adds that bit that you're not going to get on any other card. So I give him a fair play for that. They knew if they were going to try and sell this plus one after giving us an objective Jota, two more upgraded object objective Jotas that they needed to give him a play style that was well worth the upgrade. 275 isn't bad for him as well. I don't think that's a bad value whatsoever. So it is that argument between them. I then think Axel isn't really bad value either. I think they absolutely spot on with him, especially straight after the Cannavaro. I think it was like a couple of days. Oh, he won't be in this. Of course he won't. You got Cannavaro, then we got Axel straight after. He obviously has 100,000 coins for a Prem center back. He's got the block plus, which isn't necessarily everybody's cup of tea, but at least he's got a play style plus. Good pace on him. You go with the shadow. You obviously end up with 90 pace, 95 defending. As a 100k card, it's definitely not the worst you could get 100% of the time. And then we have the three different fantasy cards. We have Timo Werner. 
we have got Scott, and we've also got Gully. Now, the one thing that is required for fantasy cards, obviously, if you've not checked the video out on how they upgrade, just a brief summary, heroes have a specific team. So, I don't know who Alex Scott is, I actually... I don't know, it's not even going to tell me here. Um, but whoever she's with, because I haven't looked at the card, but Gully is with AS Monaco. Obviously, Werner is with Spurs because he is a current fantasy card. With the heroes, they have two upgrades. So both of them could go 90-91 or 91-92. They've got to win two matches in their next four encounters in the domestic league. And then they've got to score 11 goals in their next four encounters in the, in the domestic league. So that means they've got to play in, for instance, the Prem or League 1. They've got to win two of their next four matches just in the league. They can't be a cup. It can't be... I said, I don't, there's nothing else other than the cup. It can't be like practice or friendlies. It has to be the league. When it comes to the fantasy cards, we have got a goal or an assist for a striker. We have then got obviously two free appearances, I believe, or two two or three appearances they have to make specifically. Then they've got the win two and also the eleven. I believe that's all of them. Don't think any more. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Four upgrades, so we could go from nine uh, from eighty nine to ninety three. Pretty sure. Yeah, we'll go with that. So in terms of these, Werner, I believe, the one thing we will check is, is he playing? So if we go Spurs fixtures, because I actually don't know if he does play or not. I don't know. I just know that we've not, I've not really watched them too much. So they lost. Oh, fantastic. They lost on the 17th. I don't know if they've played since, but did he play? Lineup wise, Richarlison was on over him. Did Werner come on? Werner did come on, so I believe as long as he hits that pitch on sub or not, he makes an appearance for a minute, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, that counts. That is all that they've got to do. So I believe that was on the, when was that? That was the, oh, okay, yeah, of course, they got postponed, that's why. So that was the 17th of Feb, which would have been the Saturday which most definitely wouldn't have been this time. So they've, Tottenham have technically not done their first match yet. They have got Crystal Palace, Aston Villa, Fulham, and Luton. If they really got their shooting boots on, Werner could potentially get the whole way there. It will depend on, obviously, the Crystal Palace, because I believe Fulham and, and Luton Town, they should be able to rack up some goals. Villa at home, or Villa away for them, that's going to be a little bit more tricky for them, especially with the form of both of them kind of up and down at the moment, that is going to be an interesting one to see what actually expires there, or transpires, expires. <laughs> Terrible. But in terms of kind of value-wise, we're looking at both of these as, what, 490,000, 270, and 93,000. Now, straight away, Gulli is 100% must. That is phenomenal. Monaco did win their first match as well, so they already got three goals and won their first. They just need to win one of the next three. He gets the 91. So already, I'm absolutely quids in with that SBC. With Alex Scott, I'm half and half, to be honest, because I think in terms of a right back, she's definitely decent. She's got the relentless plus and the jockey. They're not terrible uh, right back traits. I will absolutely take it. Four star weak foot. We've got a good amount of composure. Pace wise is there. Defending's there. Physical's obviously due. And anchor, which would make her controlled. Definitely not a bad right back. If you've done Carfu and you're just looking for a standard top right back, so you only want one, you don't need a sub or anything, then I'd definitely stick with Carfu if I'm being brutal. But I think in terms of value, she definitely could be a lot worse. I think 270 for a right back isn't necessarily the worst. And in Werner's case, I would... Now, this is all dependent on are you a betting man or not. I personally would say it's worth doing. I feel like there's a very good chance. If he's playing, then definitely going to get one upgrade. 90 Werner, fantastic. They should, should win two of their uh, matches. Luton, they should win. Crystal Palace is a half and half, to be honest. Villa, I'd say, is a 50-50. Villa's definitely on the form, but it could be. And then I'd say they should beat Fulham. Man, you didn't quite exactly beat Fulham either, but they should. In, in, the, in the look of it, if they were playing Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool and Arsenal, fair enough. I could say, mm, maybe miss out on it. But there's a good chance they win two. He makes the appearances. Could he get an assist and a goal? That's going to be a third one that's a potential. It's the 11 goals that is the, the nail-biter for him. But I personally would take a punt on him. For 500000 for a potential 93, at a very good rate of a 92, and I'd say at the minimum a 91, 
I personally would love that odds. I think that is definitely worth a look in at the absolute minimum. Then we have got, I believe, all of the icons. So let's have a look and see what days we've got. I don't know why I'm speaking like this, but in terms of what we've got, we have got 30 hours for, uh, for Bobby Moore, three days, three days, five, seven, 16, 19, 20, 21, 22, 26, and then we've got seven weeks, obviously, for the future stars. So in terms of kind of if we move these around a little bit, we've obviously got the future stars for the longest time. Everything else is going within this month. So that is crazy that more than likely we are going to see a massive increase on icons. And if I'm thinking we're going to get rid of the winter, I don't think they add too many more until the winter wild cards are gone. So we've got seven days. I personally don't know what the next promo is. So that could be interesting to see where we're going there. Bobby Moore straight away is getting in the bin. I would, oh, what's Roy Keane? 108. Yeah, I'd probably say Roy Keane's in the bin as well. I would go. Good value for Trezeguet. Good value for Sucare. I don't think they're terrible. What was Ian Wright was five seventy. It, it's still decent value. I mean, I'm not a massive fan of it. I, I really would like to put him in nothing else to do or maybe not do. But he's he's not the worst value, and I think he was one of the cards that actually they got right in terms of upgrading him to a right wing, but then actually making him at least usable on that right wing. It kind of worked personally. Then we obviously have got Zico, Henri, Carfu, and Cole. Now, in terms of their prices, we've obviously got Ashley Cole at 550, 780 for Thierry Henry, 1.1 for Zico, and 530 for Carfu. Carfu? Yes. Now, in terms of Carfu, I'm a big believer. One of the best right backs you can get, other than Frimpong, other than Battle. You obviously then got a few of the others that, that are in there. Obviously, Carfu's got two different versions. I think he's an easy SBC that will last you till team of the season. It is as simple as that. So that is a number one shout for me. You could argue the same with Zico and Henri. To some extent, Cole, I'm not a massive fan, so he's going in the bin. Henri, seven, eight, it's, it's good. I don't think it's a must complete, especially now. I think we've got a lot of strikers. I don't see him as a must now. Maybe when he first came out, he definitely was. If you hadn't done an Mbappe or Eusebio yet, he could have been the next shout for you. But the one thing that I'm learning this year is SBCs are so... There's just a, a massive quantity. I'm used to, obviously, SBCs just going up in value, going up in quantity, as we've seen through the FIFAs, and, and just really gone from, like, FIFA 18 to 21 to 22, all the way to now. But this year, the quantity of not a low, not a, uh, not even just normal SBCs, player of the months, future stars, like, we, we've seen loads of them, that's normal. But the amount of icons is crazy, and they come in absolute waves. And now we are so close to the end of this wave, if I was looking at any of the SBCs from Icons, like Carfu, Best, Sour, Zico, Cole, if you are considering doing them, I would just give them a week or two. Because what we're seeing is normally you will get a big batch of Icons. Say I've got 20 Icons. Once they get rid of like 10 and then they go down into the 15s, you'll find that the next replenishment is coming. So because they don't release them all at once, like they used to where they give us two at a time, then the next week they give us another two. Now they just stagnate them. So you'll get one one day, another one in three days, four days, three days, three days. And then suddenly you've got your 20 again. Once that again goes to 10 and 15, they just replenish them again. You might find future stars. You might find normal base. You'll find centurions. You'll find team of the year potentials. They just continuously just repurpose them and bring them forward. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see somebody like a Cruyff next. I, genuinely, that is where the game's going. I could imagine we're going to get a top end one, a striker, a midfielder, a center back. We had Maldini as well. They just go through the exact same footage. I could imagine an Eto actually. If Eto had an upgrade, like for instance, if he had a Centurions like Eusebio, I could have seen that card being next. Henri will fade and then the next one takes his place. We had the same with Eusebio. We had the same with Maldini. He took over Blanc and it, we just keep going up. So I would always... Just wait a little bit, especially now we're getting to the end. If you're doing it right at the start, you've got seven weeks to go, but you're getting them done day one. Fair enough. Now we're at this point. 
just give it another week and just see what's leaked, what's going to come out. Because I can imagine, once we find out what the next promo is, I believe it should be foot birthday. Unless we go for the FC ballers, it all depends on what sort of time frame we've got. Because we had foot skillers, or was it footballers we had um, next in terms of last year. Then we went into foot birthday, trophy titans, team of the season. It is scary to think team of the season could be that close. But we should get foot birthday next. If they do this as a two-week promo, that works out perfectly because then them seven days is gone. And then we go straight into foot birthday, straight into foot birthday icons, straight into foot birthday icon SBCs. So that is where I'm seeing it. And I think that is going to be the next step of icon SBCs. Then we might get at the end of foot birthday, a few little sprinkles of random players like Zico and Henri base. We already had two other versions of them. So we had Thunderstruck Henri, we had Centurion Zico. We then got Future Star Zico. I can imagine they'll do the same. So we might see somebody like a base Roberto Carlos. I think that is a cracking SBC, especially when it takes over Cole. You could see maybe an upgraded Zambrotta in foot birthday. That just you know you know i heard that if you hear that here you know i said zambrotta for foot birthday icon i'm just I'm, I'm speculating so if we get back on track and rather on the rant of me conspiracizing where we go with ea next we've got georgie best and sour honestly i'd but i'd both both say that they're, they're decent they're good value in terms of what you're getting back 1.6 1.04 it's standard value nowadays. I don't think any of them are must-completes. They're just there. Potentially, if you want to do them at some point, but I would say they're kind of just good values rather than best. We then have Shevchenko, Rijkaard, Baggio, and Cannavaro. Now, I already know where I'm going with all of these. You can see the prices on screen. Personally, for me, Rijkaard is a must-complete. Even if you don't want to put him in the main team just yet, maybe you're a super sub, there is a chance that guy gets an evolution. And I think that is absolutely marvelous because he is going to be a great card in the future at the absolute minimum. Because the main thing to look at whenever looking at evolutions, yes, is the play style pluses. I believe he does have the one. So that's already good because once we start getting evolutions that allow double, Normally, they're trying to just take them away. We will then be able to get the double play star plus on him. Let alone that, when you look at the stats, nothing's above 90. That is a good source that we might get a pace upgrade for him, a physical upgrade for him, even passing or dribbling. That is something that could be looked at. Baggio, I would personally go with nothing else to do. Cannavaro, I think is decent value for what you get back. I'm not a massive fan of the card personally. I think he's he's decent, but he could have been so much better. And I think that's more where my annoyance comes with him is not the fact that the acrobatic is just terrible for him. But I think that card could have been so much better than what they've given him the upgrade. Hopefully in the next upgrade, if he does get another upgrade, because that was his first, we do see a better version coming in. And I think Shevchenko is definitely decent value. Better, better value than most icons. I wouldn't say must complete, but most definitely a decent value if you are looking for a striker of an icon variant. And that is going to be the list. Let me know down below if you agree, disagree. Let me know your thoughts. And I'll catch you all for the next one. Peace.